Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson one of the Hello World series of my RISC-V assembly programming tutorials. Today, we're going to be doing a very brief introduction to the RAS simulator, and we're going to write a basic Hello World example, and we're going to run it. Now, this example today is one taken from my new book, which is called Learn Multi-Platform Assembly with TB Akamas Volume 2, and it covers a new five assembly languages, you can see there, um, Thumb 65816, 6809, PDP11, and RISC-V. It's exactly the same format as the first book and you don't need to have read the first book to have a go with it so if you want to you can um, buy that book from Amazon if you don't want to you can get the source code for today's example from my website you don't need to pay any money to try out today's example it's all free anyway let's go straight over and let's learn about how we can start up the RAS simulator over we go Okay, so the RAS simulator is Java based and you can download it free from the internet. There's a link on my website. So I've downloaded the version 1.3.1. The latest version is 1.5, I believe, but um, the code today will work fine on 3, 4, or 1.3, 1.4, or 1.5. Now to start it, what I'm doing is I'm specifying the path of my Java um, runtime and I'm specifying to load up the jar file with it. And so we'll just hit enter there. You can see the simulator is starting up and it started up far too big there. That's right. So there we go. So now we've got the RAS simulator running. Okay. Now if I go to the file menu here and I select open, we will load up the source file for my book. So we're going to be looking at this hello world file, hello world.asm here today. And this is what we're going to be running. Now, if I just click the layout of the screen, just a little bit here, there we go. Now, there are a few things we need to know. Now, we're just going to have a look at the contents of this file in just a moment. But first of all, how do we actually run it? Well, the key menu here is the run menu. The first option we have to select is assemble. Now, this will build the file. And um, if we end up with no errors here, we've got completed successfully, so things are looking good, then we can go back to this run menu. And now we can select the go option. Now, in this case, the go option will just run the program and it will show in the I.O tab here, hello world, which is all this program is supposed to do. So that has worked just fine. Now, hypothetically speaking, if we had made some kind of horrendous error, like if we had invented a new command called lip here, maybe we've invented a command there. Well, now if we try and do run and assemble again, well, we are being told there's an error in our code there. The lip is not a recognized operator quite right. It is not. So um, in that case, we would need to fix our program. But as I say, generally speaking, if we get no errors, we can just run away. Now, there are also links to these on the menu bar here as well. If you prefer a bit quicker, you can use those as well. OK, so that's how we can compile and see the results of our program. Let's take a look at the actual program itself. Now, the RISC-V simulator will require any data that we want to load in to our registers to be in the specific data segment. So we've got our hello world message here. Now in my tutorials, I always use 255 byte termination. So our string has a 255 byte at the end of it. Our string is called text hello world. That's the label that points to this message we want to show to the screen. And that does need to be in the data segment. So that's something to bear in mind. Now with the RAS simulator, comments will start with a hash and not the usual semicolon. So you can see we've got various comments here. If you were typing this in, you don't need to type in the comments, of course. Now, our text is in the data segment. Quite strangely, our code is in the text segment. That's just the way, uh, that's the, way, the normal way for these um, assemblers to work. Um, the text segment actually contains our program code. So you can see here, we've got various commands here. Now, the key to all of our program today is the print char routine. The print char routine is going to show a character to the screen. Now, we're going to use something known as an e-call. Now, these are functions that are built into the RAS simulator. The e-call command is defined in the RAS um, syntax, but it's not a command that the, ex will exist in a normal processor and do this this task it's specific to this simulator so when we want to use this e-call we need to load a function number into a7 and we're loading the function 11 into the register a7 here and then when we run e-call function 11 will do the task of printing whatever is in a0 to the screen so our print char routine here will show the character in a0 to the screen and then it will return and we're going to of course use this to create a print string routine now, the first thing we're doing here is we are backing up the return address so that we can correctly return. So um, this allows us to run a subroutine within this function. So we're adding an extra four bytes to the stack pointer, moving the stack down 
allocating enough space to store the return address. And then at the end, we're restoring the return address off the stack and we're returning. As I say, that, that we need to do that so that we can call a subroutine, the print char routine. The print char routine has no subroutines, so it doesn't need to do that. Now, what does the print string routine actually do? Well, we are loading the a byte that we're looking at for the end of our string into A2. And we're then loading one unsigned byte from the address in A1 into A0. So we're loading that byte into A0. And we're going to, if the A0, the byte we just read in, is equal to A2, the end byte, the 255 byte that represents the end of our string, then we're going to jump to print string done, which of course will just return. Now, if the current character isn't the end byte, then we're going to call the subroutine with jump and link print char. So that will jump down here, do this task of printing it to the screen and then returning. So that's what's happening there. And then the final thing we're doing here is we're adding one to the register A1, which of course is our source address. So this print string routine is doing all of that and it's effectively showing our string to the screen via the print char routine. So when we want to use this print string routine, all we need to do is we need to load the address with LA of the string we want to show the text hello world string into A1 and we just run it. Now, when we've shown that string to the screen, then what we want to do is we want to return back to the operating system, the, the simulator actually in this case, and we do that with an eCall again. However, rather than using eCall function 11, this time we're using eCall function 10. So we load 10 into A7 and we call that eCall, which is effectively the end of our program. So there's, there's no kind of return here, that's the end of our program. Now, as I say though, one, one strange thing almost, um, we do have to bear in mind is, for us to be able to load the address of text hello, it does need to be in that data segment. So if I try and mischievously load it into the text segment with our program code like this, and I try and run again, well, when I assemble here, you can see we've got an error, and it says the ASCII directive cannot appear in the text segment. So you can see we can't actually load that data into this segment there. So we, we do need to make sure we do that. It, it's a bit odd, as I say, most um, assemblers would allow us to do that, but this, this simulator, we do have to, we're very strict on that. We do have to keep our data in the data segment and keep our program code in the text segment. So there we go. So that's a very simple example here. Um, we're going to look at a more advanced one next time. What we're going to do is we're going to extend this and we're going to convert it into a routine that will read a register and then show it back to the screen. So we can type in from our keyboard and um, enter data and then show it back. And this is intended for us to be able to actually do tests on the values in registers. Now, if you if this is the first time you've seen RISC-V, obviously I've gone over the code very quickly today. This is not intended as a full breakdown of the programming language. I already have a tutorial series on RISC-V itself. So if you want to learn all of the commands of RISC-V and try them out, please um, have a look at that series. If you search for Chibi Akimas and RISC-V on um, YouTube or go to my website, you will find my uh, the RISC-V assembly programming tutorials. So please take a look at those if you need to see more. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.